All right, Logic fans, welcome back to our second video on section 5.5. .5. So this is video 5.5b. We're going over our central semantic concepts. We covered uh, tautologies and contradictions. We're now going to look at semantic logical contingents, okay? And again, this just follows the exact same pattern from chapter 2, okay? So a quantificational sentence is semantically logically contingent, right? Remember chapter 2. There has to be at least one row of its truth table where it's true, and there has to be at least one row of its truth table where it's false. The idea is, from a purely logical point of view, it could be true or false. Okay, So it's semantically logically true if it's a quantificational sentence, if and only if there exists at least one interpretation according to which it's true, and there exists at least one interpretation according to which it's false. So in this case, unlike in the cases, we'll do some examples in a second, unlike in the cases of tautologies and contradictions, semantic logical truths and semantic logical falsehoods, okay, where you only have to prov provide one interpretation to prove that it's not semantically logically true, or you only have to provide one interpretation to, prov uh, to prove that it's not semantically logically false, okay, here to prove that it is semantically logically contingent, you have to provide two interpretations, one where the sentence is true, and another interpretation of the same sentence according to which it's false, okay? So, uh, what I want to do then, before we do an example of that, is uh, sort of reemphasize the same thing from chapter two, right? That uh, tautologies, contradictions, and contingents are mutually exhaustive and exclusive categories for sentences. So your professor picks a quantificational sentence out of a hat, okay, just at random they pick a sentence. It will fall into one and only one of these three categories, and you can see that from the way they're defined, okay. Um, so uh, either it's going to be a tautology, or it's going to be a contradiction, or it's going to be contingent, um, and whichever one it is, it's not either of the other two, okay. It's, it's, it's neither of the others. So, um, Really quick question then. Do you think it's possible to prove that a sentence is not a logical contingent? Pause now and think about that. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to think on that a little bit, but um, it's not going to be possible to prove that a sentence is not logically contingent. So, since these are mutually exclusive and exhaustive categories, if it's not contingent, it's one of these two. And we've already seen that you cannot prove that a sentence is this, and you cannot prove that a sentence is this. So, you cannot prove that a sentence is not semantically logically contingent. But you can prove that a sentence is semantic logically contingent, and you can do that by providing one interpretation where it's true and another interpretation on which that same sentence is false. So, let's look at it at an example of that. So for our example, let's just take a look at the categorical I sentence. Some f is g, right? Um, this is logically contingent. This is a sentence that can be true or false from a purely logical point of view. So to prove that, you're tasked with providing an interpretation according to which it's true and an interpretation according to which it's false. Do that now. Prove that the categorical I sentence is semantically logically contingent and do it with interpretations using two objects. Pause now. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to look at things, right? But uh, this would be one way of doing it. So here's an interpretation according to which this sentence is true. At least one thing in the domain satisfies this description, namely the object B. Here's an interpretation according to which this same sentence is false, right? And uh, nothing in the domain satisfies this description because nothing in there is F. So, um, therefore, this sort of presentation of two interpretations proves that the categorical I sentence is, in fact, semantically, logically contingent. Let's move right along to another important semantic, you know, central semantic concept, and that's the notion of semantic logical equivalence. And again, this mirrors or parallels our work from chapter two. So recall there we said that a pair of propositions, two propositions, one proposition was logically equivalent to another proposition if and only if they took the same truth value on every row of their truth table. Alternatively, we said if and only if their corresponding by conditional was a tautology or was logically true. Okay, so 
Uh, similarly here, what we're going to say is that a pair of quantificational sentences are semantically logically equivalent if and only if they take the same truth value on every possible interpretation. So you got an interpretation, right? If the two sentences are uh, semantically logically equivalent to one another, right? Then if the one sentence is false on that interpretation, the other sentence will also be false. If the sentence is true on that interpretation, then the other sentence will also be true. They have to take the same truth value on every possible interpretation. Alternatively stated, if and only if their corresponding biconditional is true. So remember, the corresponding biconditional is um, the first sentence, try bar, the second sentence, right? And provided that biconditional sentence is a tautology, semantically logically true, the sentences are going to be uh, logically equivalent to one another. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at an example here really quickly. So um, here I've got two pairs of sentences. So here's a sentence and here's a sentence. So in, in one here, I've got a pair of sentences. And in two here, I've also got a pair of sentences. Only one of these two pairs of sentences are logically equivalent to each other. So either this one's logically equivalent to this one or this one's logically equivalent to this one, uh, not both. Can you figure out which one intuitively? Pause now. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to think about it, right? But uh, intuitively, these two are going to be logically equivalent to one another, right? And they're going to be logically equivalent to one another because, um, uh, well, the idea here is that, you know, the order in which F and G appear doesn't matter. So, like, if you used COM, you could get this, and we will explore that in Chapter 6, okay? So, but that was supposed to be the sort of intuitive hint about it. Uh, these two are not semantically logically equivalent, okay? And you could prove that they are not semantically logically equivalent, right? By finding at least one interpretation on which they take different truth values. Because if they were semantically logically equivalent to one another, they would have to take the same truth value on all interpretations. So as long as you've got one interpretation according to which uh, they take different truth values, you know they're not semantically logically equivalent. Looked at this way, right? If they were semantically logically equivalent, their corresponding biconditional would have to be true. Uh, not, not only would it have to be true, it would have to be a tautology. It would have to be semantically logically true. So provided you have an interpretation according to which their corresponding biconditional is false, just one interpretation according to which their corresponding biconditional is false, you will have demonstrated that the two sentences in question, these two, are not semantically logically equivalent to one another. So um, based on that, and we'll go through together in a second, prove that these sentences are not semantically logically equivalent to one another using an interpretation of, say, two objects. Pause now. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to do this, but uh, let's go through it together. So here's one single interpretation, right? And on this one interpretation, this sentence is true. Something in the domain satisfies this description. It's both F and G, namely the object A. Okay, but uh, what about this sentence? Something in the domain is both F and not G. Well, that's going to be false, right? Nothing in the domain satisfies this description, so A doesn't satisfy that description, and B isn't going to satisfy it either. So this sentence is going to turn out to be false. So here's one interpretation where this sentence is true and this sentence is false. Therefore, with respect to these two sentences, with respect to this pair of sentences, it is not the case that they take the same truth value on every possible interpretation. Here's one where they don't take the same truth value on every possible. Now, it doesn't matter which one's true and which one's false, but any interpretation where the one is true and the other is false will suffice. Okay, and, and that's what we have here. Alternatively, we can look at this from the point of view of, of this way of defining things, if and only if their corresponding biconditional is semantically logically true. Well, the corresponding biconditional of these two propositions is just going to be this proposition here. And what we have to do 
is show an interpretation according to which this corresponding biconditional is false because to be logically true, so sorry, to be semantically logically equivalent, their corresponding biconditional would have to be a tautology. Okay, and so by providing an interpretation according to which the biconditional, the corresponding biconditional is false, you show that it, the corresponding biconditional is not semantically logically true, and therefore by definition, the two sentences, this sentence and this sentence in this case, are not semantically logically equivalent. So uh, let's check out how this works here. Um, well, we know that we've got an interpretation here where uh, this, bear with me for one second here, we've got an interpretation here where this sentence is true and this sentence is false, right? So the biconditional is going to be false, right? Because, you know, if the, you know, it's the left to right direction that's going to be false, right? So if this, then this is going to be false. So uh, here's an interpretation according to which this biconditional is false. Therefore, this biconditional is not a tautology. It's not true on every possible interpretation. Here's one where it's false. And therefore, by definition, this sentence is not logically equivalent, semantically logically equivalent to this sentence. Okay, uh, pretty cool, right? And all of this corresponds to our work uh, from chapter two. So uh, keep all of that in mind. Now, can we show that this pair of sentences here which we said were semantically logically equivalent to one another are in fact semantically logically equivalent to one another? And the answer to that question is no, we cannot show that, all right? Why? Because we would have to go through every possible interpretation and see whether they always take the same truth value, okay? Um, on this way of looking at it, you would have to go through every possible uh, interpretation and make sure that the biconditional, right, the corresponding biconditional of the two was true on every possible one. And we already went over how we cannot um, semantically show that um, a given proposition, in this case, the, the corresponding biconditional of these two is in fact a tautology. We can prove that, that a sentence is not a tautology, but we can't prove that it is a tautology. So um, you cannot prove that two sentences are semantically logically equivalent at least you cannot prove that using exclusively the semantic techniques available at our disposal right now, but um, you can prove that a pair of sentences are not semantically logically equivalent by providing an interpretation where the one sentence is true and the other sentence is false. Okay. All right. Let's uh, see where we're at here. Let's continue our discussion of central semantic concepts into the next video 5.5c. Catch you on that one.